Hello family, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Angela and this channel is all about beauty, fashion, and life. In today's video, I'm gonna give you some of my tips for creating a functional and classic wardrobe. Now, if that's something you're interested in, stay tuned and let's get started. Now this is my outfit of the day. These earrings are from RAI. This shirt is from Zara. I think I purchased this sometime this year. These shorts are from Zara. Look, I have these in every color. I absolutely love the fit of these. They're high-waisted. They do have pockets, but I don't even understand why they put the button. You can't stick your hand in the pocket without opening, taking the unfastening the button. I think I'm gonna take the buttons off and sew them on the outside of the pocket. That way I don't have to worry about that. They don't have pockets in the back, but they're just really cute. They're really high-waisted and they're very, very comfortable. I have them in mauve, black, pink, green. I have them in every color they make. And I paired it with, oh, my shoes. My shoes are from Sam Edelman. They're dupes for the Hermes Aeron sandals, I want some of those, but hey, these are a much, much, much more budget-friendly pair. I actually really, really like these too, and I like the fact that they have a brown sole, and they're really pretty. I've had them for a couple years. They work just fine. I also paired it with my coach, my cute little new coach purse. I purchased this, I honestly thought it was larger. I read the, the dimensions, and in my head it was bigger, but when it got here, I was like, that's really little, I was gonna actually send it back, but you see how it's wide here? It actually holds more stuff than I thought it would, so it has a nice, look how pretty that is on the inside. It has lots of room, it can hold two cell phones. I'll have to, my purse has to always hold my cell phone and production cell phone when we go somewhere, so it can hold my cell phone, his cell phone, keys, uh, my little mini wallet, some lip gloss, what have you. But it's just really cute. It has a cute little handle here and it has a strap that fits really perfectly. Crossbody for me and the strap is adjustable. So I thought it was really cute and it really matches my shorts really well. Now my scent of the day is, it's from Tory Burch. See, this is how much juice is left in it. I've used half of it. It's the Jolie Fleur Lavande. I'm sure I messed that up. But I'll um, try to put a picture so you'll be able to see it. It's really, really soft, very soft, but uh, it has a lot of floral notes in it, but it's a very soft, the first scent I smell is like a powdery. If you like a soft, powdery scent, this smells very powdery to me. The top notes are lavender, freesia, bergamot, and peony. I like to say peony because somebody in here like hates when I say peony. They like for me to say peony, but I like to say peony. The middle notes are iris, violet, magnolia, and mate. I have no clue what mate is. I imagine mate has a soft scent because that's probably guess, uh, mate. Mate, okay. probably. <laughs> the, the base notes are lavender, tonka bean, and musk. So the tonka bean and the musk are, are along with the mate, are probably the notes that make it um, have that soft powdery scent. But this is a very soft powdery scent. It sounds like it should be really, really floral scented. It didn't feel like a flower garden to smell like a flower garden to me. It just, it smells like baby powder with perfume. That's what it, that's. That's what it smells like to me. I do smell the lavender, but it's not a harsh, harsh lavender. It's a soft, gentle scent, but I really like this. I think this is really pretty, and that's why I chose this as my scent of the day. Style tip number one is to choose neutral basics or solid colored basics instead of print. Now, a neutral basic is gonna help your wardrobe transition from season to season and also from purpose to purpose. A perfect example of a neutral basic is a navy blue blazer. Now, it will transition from season to season. You can wear it in winter, summer, spring, and fall. You can wear it with dress slacks, a navy blue suit. 
You can wear it with a spring dress on top of a, uh, any solid color dress or any printed color dress that goes in line with the navy blue. You can wear it in summer on top of a cami with a pair of shorts, and you can wear it in fall with a pair of slacks or a pair of jeans and a long sleeve top. That is a perfect example of a neutral wardrobe piece that will take you from season to season and purpose to purpose. Know what your budget is for shopping. Set aside your money, whether you get paid once every two weeks or whether you're gonna put money aside once a month or once every two months, but you need to know what your budget is. Knowing your budget will help you cross out the things on your gap list. Say for instance, if you're gonna just set aside $25 a week or every two weeks, you know at the end of the month I have $50, I need to purchase a pair of black shoes or I need to purchase a white shirt. You start looking on your sites that you're gonna be getting your pieces from or know if you're gonna be consigning or going to consignment shops or uh, buying pieces secondhand or buying pieces on sale. At least you know what your budget is, okay, I have this much money to get these pieces and it'll help you get those pieces in more seamlessly. You know, you get, a, you'll get stressed if you are thinking of overspent for the month. But if you set aside your money and you've already set aside your gap list, so you know how much money you have, you know what's on the list and those two can marry together, then that will decrease the stress of increasing your wardrobe pieces and buying those pieces and knowing what sites you're gonna shop on to purchase those pieces. know what's already in your wardrobe. Do you have your wardrobe basics? Do you have your white button down shirt? Do you have your navy blazer? Do you have your dark jeans? Do you have your basic tee? Do you have your wardrobe basics? Your wardrobe basics are the foundation like the butter and the sugar and the flour of a cake. Without those foundations, the rest is just not gonna, going to function the way it should function for you for whatever you're doing on a daily basis. So do you have your wardrobe basics? If you don't have your wardrobe basics secured, we need to start there. You need to have those pieces so that your wardrobe will function and flow seamlessly so you're not finding yourself with a closet full of clothes and I don't have anything to wear. When you have your basics, for example, if you have a basic white t-shirt, you saw in one of my last videos, I take your basic t-shirt, pair it with a pair of slacks, a pair of heels in your purse, you have an entire outfit. You can take your basic t-shirt, pair it with a pair of denim shorts, a pair of summer sandals, outfit done. Basic t-shirt, basic pair of jeans, put it on, outfit done. Just grab your pair of shoes. So when you have your basics down packed, and I mean like solid colors, neutral colors, then it's easier to grab, just run in your closet and grab those pieces and put outfits together. If you don't have like your basic t-shirt and you have a lot of shirts with a lot of prints, you know, those prints are not gonna necessarily go with the pair of slacks or the pair of jeans that you're looking for. So you must have your wardrobe basics first before you try to get extra pieces to put into your wardrobe. Now that you've gone through your wardrobe and you've identified, oh, I think I'm missing this basic white tee or I'm missing my basic blue blazer or I'm missing my basic black pumps, you create yourself a gap list. This is a list of pieces that are essential to your wardrobe to help transition from season to season, function to function, that are missing that you can put on the list. I recommend keeping that list in your phone because everyone knows your phone is always with you. I look at my gap list before I do any shopping online or in person. If I'm going to a mall, if I'm going somewhere shopping, I open my phone, I look at my gap list, and that way while I'm perusing or window shopping or I'm online perusing or window shopping, I'm always keeping those pieces in mind. I'm looking for those pieces. I'm looking on the sales site, see if I can find those pieces because I want these pieces to get into my wardrobe so that it can help expand the usage of everything that I have. know your correct body shape and know your dimensions. For example, I am a petite. I know that if I go on to, I think Gap has or J. Crew has jeans that are petite, regular, and long. I know I'm petite. If I purchase a pair of jeans, if they don't have my size in petite and I decide, oh, I can just purchase a pair that are long and I can just cut them off, 
the inseam of the pants are gonna be really long on me. So I know I cannot, even though I would think that I could just cut the pants off, the fit is gonna be completely off. The, what the jeans are gonna hit me at the bottom are gonna be completely wrong, where the top is gonna be completely wrong. So you have to know your body shape along with that and your body size and what flatters your figure. Some dresses that flatters everyone's figure is a fit and flare and wrap dresses. They look good on everyone. They really, really do. But if you want to have a wardrobe that is very functional for you specifically, know your body shape and be familiar with your personal size and your dimensions. The next style tip is to know your aesthetic. For example, for me, I, I like a lot of color. I don't have a lot of neutrals. Well, I actually have more than I thought I did, but I prefer bright, vibrant colors. So I'm always shopping on sites that have lots of color and lots of lacy and lots of flowy details in their clothes. I, I can do neutrals, but I gravitate to something that's bright and vibrant. There are websites that you can go to where almost everything on the website is neutral. So knowing your aesthetic will guide you towards which stores suit your aesthetic and which stores do not. Also knowing your aesthetic means knowing what type of clothes you like. Some women like to dress a little more modest. Some people like a modern feel. Some people like a classic feel. Some people like a flirty feel. They like a lot of lace detail on their clothes. Some women like a lot of boho uh, looks and you know they like a lot of loose linenly, linenly. <laughs> They like, they like a lot of loose and linen fabrics, a lot of whites and pastels and creams, nothing very vibrant or cut harsh, nothing very architectural. So you have to really, really know your aesthetic. I personally don't like a lot of harsh cuts. Like I don't like blazers with square shoulders. I don't like really, really short skirts. I like things that fit, but I don't like things that are extremely tight or extremely short. So you have to know your aesthetic and that will also guide you to the stores where you're gonna make most of your purchases to help build your wardrobe. So it's very important that you know your aesthetic. Knowing the primary function of your wardrobe pieces, for example, what is your occupation? Are you a nurse? Are you a school teacher? Are you looking for professional attire? Are you a minister's wife? Are you, are you looking for a more dressy um, wardrobe? Are you a stay-at-home mom? Are you looking for a more relaxed wardrobe? Are you working from home because of you know what's going on? So you're looking for wardrobe pieces that are very relaxed, very laid back. Do you want sweatpants and sneakers? Do you want heels and skirts? You have to know what your wardrobe is gonna primarily function for you. And that will also tell you, okay, I need to shop at this store. These are the pieces I'm looking for. It will help you with your gap list. It will help you identify pieces that you really, really need. When I first started working in management, I had been on the floor. I had been on the floor. <laughs> I was a bedside nurse for numerous years prior to going into management. And when I went to management and leadership roles, I had zero professional attire. I had scrubs and I had church clothes and jeans. That's it. I didn't own any khakis. I didn't own any dress slacks. I didn't own any like blouses. I owned dresses, skirts, a few shirts, but mostly dresses, jeans, and uh, scrubs. I had a lot of scrubs, but I couldn't wear those as a leader in the hospital. So I had to build a professional wardrobe from scratch. And it was very, very challenging because uh, First of all, I didn't have a lot of money, so I tried to had to try to figure out, okay, where I'm gonna get these pieces. I had to try to determine which pieces I needed first, and I just was completely clueless. So it took me an extended period of time to gather my basics for my professional wardrobe, and then to start um, putting in additional pieces just to make my wardrobe speak to my aesthetic and my look. And I made a lot of mistakes along the way. Uh, at first, I got pieces that uh, I just need some black pants, so I just would pick black pants and then I would wear them and they would get lint balls and they didn't really fit well and I just didn't know the tips and things that I know now. Now I know if I were giving advice to someone who was starting, to say, a professional wardrobe, my advice, and didn't have a lot of money because I didn't have a lot of money. My advice to her would be, okay, what is your budget? Do you have like $75 for a nice pair of black slacks? 
the first thing I would tell her to do is go like on a site like Nordstrom's, look on, look, go straight to the sale, sales department. First of all, you know those pieces are gonna be quality pieces if they're coming from there, or chances are they're gonna be, they're gonna have a higher quality then. So if you if you went to somewhere like Walmart and get a pair of uh, black slacks, yes, the price is gonna be a lot cheaper, but these slacks here from Nordstrom are gonna last you a much longer time. And if you can't afford to dry clean them because I couldn't afford to really dry clean pants, then I would hand wash them or I put them in the, the laundry bags and wash them in the general slack them, take them out, shake them out really fast and hang them up to air dry and iron them with a really, on a really, really low temperature. Um, that's what I would recommend for them. I just made the mistake of just, I just need some black pants. I'm just gonna get these black pants as I like them forward. And the pieces didn't flow well, they didn't lay well, but you know, I had them in my wardrobe. So I ended up having to give those pieces away or donated to Goodwill after a very short period of time. I digress, but the purpose of that was to make sure you know the function of your wardrobe. What is the primary function of your wardrobe? For me, it's divided. Half the time is for my professional dress. The other half of the time it's for um, my YouTube channel. And, and you know, I have a little bit in between where I'm just relaxed. I have very, very few, uh, what do they call this? Loungewear pieces. I just started buying loungewear. But you know, even though I have a couple of loungewear sets, I, I bought some dresses from Amazon that I wear almost every weekend. I wake up, put these dresses on, and they're just easy to go. So loungewear is cute, but it's, it doesn't function for my lifestyle. So know the primary function of your wardrobe piece. So that's it family. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Just know this is the way that I achieved my wardrobe. These tips are just tips and recommendations. You don't have to follow them, but these are some of the tips I use to create my wardrobe. Again, thank you so much for spending some of your valuable time with me. But before I go, if you haven't subscribed yet, Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'd love for you to join my Angela Michelle YouTube family. Also, I create content on Instagram. My Instagram tag is Angela Michelle as well. And I just want to say thank you so much for spending some of your valuable time with me and have a blessed, blessed day. Bye-bye.